All right. If you are interested in knowing more about the poultry industry in Canada, this is the right video for you. I'm gonna talk about the poultry industry at the federal level, at the provincial level, especially in Alberta. And I'm going to introduce uh, poultry commodities in Canada and the management system. And also I'll touch a little bit on some differences in the poultry industry between uh, Western Canada and Eastern Canada. So let's get started. We do have four different commodities in Canada. Broiler chickens, or we call them meat type chickens that we are consuming, you know, routinely. We do have 2,660 broiler farms in Canada, which 240 of them are located in Alberta. And also their parent stock, we call them broiler breeders, and we do have table egg layers, farms and turkey farms. And you can see, you know, the number of uh, different uh, poultry farms in Canada and Alberta here. So let's start with uh, egg industry. We do have different uh, products in Alberta and of course in Canada. The most common one is generic white eggs. They come from traditional system from caged hens. We do have a free runs, free run eggs. They come from free run system. It means that the birds are raised on the floor or on the aviary system. Actually, aviary system is a multi-tire system, is like a you know multi-floor uh, system. And the birds can jump around, can perch and they can express, you know, their natural behavior. That's why we can say, you know, aviary system is an environmental enrichment for the birds. We do have free range eggs. They come from free range system, which is a little bit different from free run. In free run, the Birds are inside the barn, but they are not caged. You know, they can run around freely. But in free range, in addition to the barn area, they do have access to the outdoor area. And at some times they can go out, they can graze around, eat, you know, natural plants, bugs, and I would say it makes their product natural. We do have brown eggs and uh, organic eggs. In organic system, actually, uh, you have to use the feed ingredients that are not exposed to any uh, herbicide or pesticide. And also you are not allowed to use any feed additives that are produced chemically. It means that you cannot use synthetic theraonine amino acid. And overall, it should be all natural. In omega-3 eggs, we are using uh, some feed ingredients that, that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. The most common one is flaxseed uh, that we are using in poultry diets. We do have vitamin enriched eggs. It means that you need to use more vitamin sources and supplements in their diet. So let's have a look at the broiler production supply chain. Actually, we are 
in Alberta, we are receiving uh, one day old chicks of broiler breeders from southern US, uh, from primary breeding organizations, mainly Aviagen and Cobb. They ship the chicks to Alberta and other provinces by truck and sometimes by airplane for some other provinces. And it takes about 40 to 50 hours uh, for the chicks to reach Alberta. Hatching egg producers receive those chicks. They raise them until 58 weeks of age. During the COVID time, uh, they were raising until 50 weeks of age. And then they sell the uh, fertile eggs to hatcheries. We do have three main hatcheries in Alberta, Maple Leaf, Sunrise, and Lilydale. And then, you know, hatched chicks should be sold to broiler producers, and they are going to raise the meat type chicks until 33 to 38 days of age. And at the end of the day, they will sell it to broiler processors and they are going to sell the chicken meat to restaurants and uh, the market. So let's focus a little bit on the management system of poultry in Canada. We call this system supply management system, or in shorts, you can call it SM. So supply management is a system of controlled markets that ensures a fair return for farmers, price stability for processors and consumers, continuous supply of high quality products, and also you need to you know, match the supply with demand. And I'm going to explain more about supply management system in Canada. So it is different from the you know, management system in US. In USA, they are using fully integrated system. It means that one company owns, you know, uh, primary breeder organization and also hatcheries, feed meals, uh, you know, broiler breeder farm, broiler farm. And by that, uh, let's say if they lose money <laughs> at some level, let's say at the broiler breeder level, they can compensated in their broilers. And overall, the net income of the system is important for them. When I'm saying losing money, not exactly losing, it means that if they you know, earn less profit in one level, they can compensate it in another level. But in the supply management system, everybody has to make living. Broiler breeder farm, broiler farm. So they need to maximize the profit and cash. So this system will require a little bit, you know, different nutritional system, managerial system from the integrated system. And that's why it's really important to know the management system of you know, poultry industry in a country and then you know, work in that industry. Because without that perspective, you cannot exactly say, okay, what strategy, what feeding strategy, what managerial 
strategy you are going to use to manage the poultry production. Overall, there are three pillars for supply management system. Production control, price control, and import control. It means that we need to control the production to match the supply with demand. We need to uh, you know, set the price and to make sure that farmers are getting fair uh, cash and also price is uh, stable for consumers. And on the other hand, you need to control the import of poultry products into country. And I'll talk about this uh, in the later slides as well. So let's have a brief look uh, at the history of supply management poultry in Canada. Actually, it goes back to 1972 when CIMA was established. CIMA was Canadian Egg Marketing Agency, but now it's known as EFC, Egg Farmers of Canada. In 1974, CTMA or Canadian Turkey Marketing Agency was established. Now it's known as TFC or Turkey Farmers of Canada. In 1978, CCMA or Canadian Chicken Marketing Agency, now, now it's uh, called CFC or Chicken Farmers of Canada. And in 1986, Canadian Broiler Hatching Egg Marketing Agency was established and now we call it CHIP or Canadian hatching egg producers. If you want to know more about, you know, these uh, organizations, you can just uh, Google them and get more information about each of them. In Alberta, uh, we call them SM4 for poultry because there are actually four commodities. ACP or Alberta chicken producers, AHEP or Alberta hatching egg producers, ATP, Alberta turkey producers, and egg farmers of Alberta. So let's have a flashback to supply management pillars. We talked about production control. How should we control the production? Actually, we are using quota to control the production, poultry production in Canada. And actually, you need to uh, buy quota and have a quota to be eligible to run a poultry uh, business in Canada. And I'll talk about uh, quota in the later slides. In terms of price control, actually uh, marketing boards, uh, they set the price and they are going to reduce FCR volatility. When we are talking about FCR here, it's not feed conversion ratio, which is you know common in poultry systems. Here, FCR stands for farm cash receipts. And we really need to you know, set the price in such a way, as I said, to have a fair return for farmers and stable price for the producers, for, for the processors and consumers. And for the import control, you know, they have set uh, quotas for import and also tariffs. For example, up until a certain level, the import of you know, poultry products are tariff-free, 
But after that, if you want to go over that level, you need to pay tariff. If you want to know more about this, you can uh, check Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada website and go to Animal Industry Division under the Market Information section. You can find more about you know, import control and other pillars. So let's talk a little bit about quota. What is quota? Actually, quota is a fixed share of something that a person or group is entitled to receive or is bound to contribute. In short term, quota is the right for production. It means that um, you need to buy quota and based on the uh, you know, number of quotas that you have purchased, you can produce you know, a certain amount of poultry products in Canada. Here is an example to see how you can quantify the amount of production or quota you need. This formula is specifically for broilers. So here, P is the production. It means that kilogram of chicken per cycle. If you want to know how much, you know, uh, chicken meat you can produce per cycle based on the you know, number of quotas that you have, you can use this uh, formula. QU is the quota units. I mean, the number of units, quota units per cycle that you have purchased. UF is utilization factor. It's based on percentage and it's determined, you know, by the uh, market. And actually, it adjusts the production. Uh, for different seasons and different months. Uh, for example, let's say during the summer, which you know most people are barbecuing, the utilization factor goes up. Or maybe in winter, it goes a little bit down. So actually, util utilization factor adjusts the production without changing other parameters in the formula. CL is the cycle length based on weeks, and it is eight weeks for broilers. And CF is a conversion factor. Kilogram per quota unit per week. And as an example, if you, you know, put together all the uh, factors in this uh, formula, for example, uh, in this example, one unit per cycle times 102.3% utilization factor, eight weeks, you know, cycle length and 0 0.5 uh, conversion factor, you would get around four kilogram uh, chicken per cycle. It is for one quota unit. And for, you know, these factors, you can go to Chicken Alberta website and there is a table over there for different years and you can get the utilization factor and other necessary information from that website if you are interested in calculating the quota units. So overall, the maximum amount of quota for a producer is 5% of the total provincial quota. But if you are running your business with somebody else, let's say as a family, a maximum amount of quota 
would be around 10% of the total provincial quota. And for sure, there are levies or penalties for uh, you know, over and under production. It means that if you have purchased you know, a certain amount of quota units, you need to stick to that and do not produce over or under. So do you need to purchase quota for you know, every production? No, it depends on the size of your production. For broiler chickens, quota exemption lim limit is 2,000 birds per year. It means that if you are raising broiler chickens up until 2,000 birds per year, you do not need to have quota and its quota exemption. For turkeys, it's and also for table egg layers, it's 300 uh, turkey or you know laying hens per year. But for hatching egg, you we do not have any exemption. It means that you cannot uh, raise broiler breeders without quota, and it's because the hatcheries will buy the fertile eggs only from uh, big farms, not from, you know, local broiler breeder farms. And lastly, poultry industry in Eastern versus Western Canada. What's the difference? So there are some differences in terms of feed ingredients. For example, in the Eastern Canada, they are using corn-based diets, usually corn soybean meal-based diets. But in Western Canada, uh, we are using wheat-based diets because, you know, based on the climate, it's good for uh, producing wheat, barley, and, you know, these kinds of grains, they, they've been used in Western Canada. So for the broiler breeder chicks, there is less traveling time for them in Eastern Canada, for example, in Ontario, uh, because, you know, sometimes they are, the birds are traveling uh, by airplane, but for Alberta, you know, they are, they are shipping them by trucks and it takes more time to reach the destination. And also the production measurements for broiler breeders are different sometimes. It would be based on a percentage of hen housed production or based on percentage of hen day production. And it makes, you know, huge difference. For example, if you want to calculate your uh, chick production, you can say, okay, how many one day old broiler chicks I have produced as a broiler breeder farmer per each housed hen. So it means that uh, let's say you have placed 2000 uh, broiler breeders. But when they come to production, they come to sexual maturity, you know, some of them, uh, you, you lost some of them because there was, you know, mortality. And you are not taking account for those mortality in, in uh, calculating the uh, chick production. That's why your chick production will look like uh, suboptimal or less. But it's not the fact because you are using a denominator in your production, which is not really uh, precise. You need to account for mortality. If you do that, your, your calculation will be based on hen day production. It means that this week, let's say I had 
I don't know, 20,000 live laying birds in my barn. How many chicks have I got from those 2,000, uh, 20,000 birds? So here, the percentage of production, chick production will be more accurate and precise. But this production measurement is different between provinces. And that's why we can see some differences in terms of chick production. And also, sometimes there are some differences in uh, getting paid. For example, in Alberta, it is based on sellable chicks, but in some other provinces is based on fertile eggs. Then broiler breeder farmer is sending their eggs to hatchery. They need to wait to see, you know, how many of them will hatch. And from those, how many of them will be sellable chicks? I mean, robust chicks. And they will be paid based on that. But, you know, in some other places, the payment is based on fertile eggs, which makes huge differences. It means that if let's say 95% of your eggs were fertile, they are paying you based on fertile eggs. But there are there is no guarantee that you know what would be the hatchability rate you know, or the sellable chicks production. So we need to take this stuff into consideration when we want to compare the production between different places. So this is what I got for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Please let me know if you have any questions. And if you liked the video, do not forget to hit the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.